Welcome back. This is an Alex training video on calculating the solubility of an ionic compound when a common ion is present. So um, the main teaching of this section is on the common ion effect, which I have defined here uh, at the bottom. It's a reduction of the solubility um, at a at equilibrium. So let's imagine that you have a glass of um, cold water let's see, iced tea, sweet, uh, unsweet tea, and you put some sugar in it. Some of the sugar is going to dissolve in that cold water. Some of it's not. It depend, depends on how much sweet you like your tea. You put some sugar in it, two or three teas, teaspoons of sugar, and it's not sweet enough, and you add more, and it's not sweet enough. But what you see is at the bottom of the glass, you've got a bunch of sugar because only a little bit of that sugar dissolved in that cold water. And so everything that didn't dissolve fell to the bottom. So it was saturated. All the water could, all the sugar that the water could hold was being held by the water, and then the rest of the sugar falls to the bottom. Okay, so at that moment, you're saturated. The water's holding as much as it can. At that point, there is an equilibrium going on. Some of the sugar in the bottom of the, of the jar is dissolving into the water. But at the same rate that some of the sugar that's being held by the water is recrystallizing as sugar on the bottom of the glass. So it's going back and forth and back and forth all the time, but there's the same amount of sugar at the bottom all the time. That's what equilibrium means. The rates of it becoming a crystal is the same rate as it becoming dissolved. So when you have a situation like that, the solubility um, is whatever S. P is. Now that's the solubility product and every material you can look up in a book. So uh, this one, which is a lead chromate, you would go under the, the data tab, the, the data tab which every problem has at the top of the page, and it'll show you the S sub P of every, of every material. So we've got lead chromate. I looked it up for you uh, and wrote it at the top of the page. So this is 2.8 times 10 to the negative 13. That is the product of these two ions that are dissolving and recrystallizing and dissolving and recrystallizing. Okay, you can see that it's a teeny tiny number, negative 13, which means that, that very, very, very little of it is soluble. So if you were to put lead chromate in water, almost all of the lead chromate would fall to the bottom. A teeny tiny little bit would dissolve in the water, and most of it would not. So when you're looking for a case of SP, it's just like anything. It's telling you how much is going to the end. How much is it at the end? So for instance, uh, the end is that this is lead is dissolved and chromate is dissolved. Well, how much is that happening? Is it lots? Is it very dissolvable? Or is it not dissolvable? Is it not soluble at all? Well, this very low number is telling you that it's very little bit solubility. The common ion effect is, is if I add some more of, let's say, chromate or some more lead, well, it's going to be, it's uh, Le Chatelier's principle. You're adding it to the end, and it will drive it back. So here's the balanced equation. If I add some more chromate, it's going to bounce, it's going to head it back towards the solid. It's going to be less soluble. Or if I add some more lead, that's a common ion. It's uh, The ion is in equilibrium already. If I add some more, it's going to send it back to the other side. Well, sending it back to the other side makes it less soluble. So here's the big thing. The common ion effect is if you have anything at, uh, that's in equilibrium of dissolving and recrystallizing, and you add a an ion, introduce an ion into that that's common to that solubility, it becomes less soluble. So in this case, they're going to have some lead, lead chromate. They're asking you, what is its solubility in pure water? Okay, where nothing is added. Now, add a little bit of sodium chromate, which is introducing the chromate ion to it. And how soluble is it now? And the common ion effect should tells you that it should be less soluble. You should have a lower solubility because you've introduced chromate, and chromate is part of that is messing up. It's throwing a, 
a wrench into the cogs. All right, so you're gonna need a little bit of information. One is from the data tab that you're gonna to have to look up the solubility of lead chromate. The other thing I looked up was I added all the, all the uh, molecular masses together, lead and chromate and four oxygens, and found that it was 323.2 grams per mole. So you'll need both of that. So the first thing you're gonna to need to know is that this S sub P only works at equilibrium. And at the beginning, if you were just to put some lead chromate in, in the jar with some water, there's no, there's no ions here at all. So I need to do it, I need to do an ice table. So I'm gonna start here with um, an initial of the, of the lead is zero. The initial of the chromate is zero because it's at the it's at the products and there isn't any products at the very beginning. You're going to see at equilibrium there's going to be, but at the very beginning there's not. The change is what we're figuring out. That's what we're trying to find. That's our x, and both of the x's here are in the on the right, and it's a one to one relationship. So this is one lead to one chromate. So it's one to one. So this is going to be. Um, this will be x, and this will be x. Well, add 0 to x and 0 to x, and I've got x and x. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and try to find out what the solubility it is in water. So the solubility just means these two guys, the lead and the chromate, are my x's, and my that's so that x will go here and the x will go here so x times x equals 2.8 times 10 to the negative 13 solve for x so i've got 2.8 times 10 to the negative 13 that's my uh, solubility product that i got from the data tab for this stuff for lead chromate and the two equilibriums i had was x and x, so it's a product, so I'm multiplying these together. So x times x equals this, so that's x squared. Take the square root of x, and I get 5.29 something moles per liter. So that's what x is, 5.2915. If I know that that's moles per liter and I need grams per liter, I have to go through the periodic table to, go, to turn moles into grams. And so that's 323.2. Moles will cancel, and I get 171 or 1.71 times 10 to the negative 4 grams per liter. That's how much dissolves in one liter of water, which is tiny, tiny, a little teeny bit will dissolve in a whole liter of water. So I want two significant digits. So I'm going to do that as uh, 1.7 times 10 to the negative 4 grams per liter. Okay, so there's my first question. The second one, when I do, when I go back and do the um, ice table, I have zero initial lead, but I've added 0.007 molar of sodium chromate. Okay, sodium chromate over here. Sodium chromate, well, the sodium doesn't do anything, but the chromate is an ion that's common. So what it'll do is it will drive the equilibrium back over towards lead chromate, which is less soluble. So it will be 0 0.0070. X and X, this is the change, the same as before. And just like before, lead will be X, but this is going to be 0 0.0070 plus X. So when I... When I do this again, I do not, it's not like this where I have x and x. I have x times 0 0.0070 plus x. Well, I really hate that because I'm going to have, here's my solubility constant again, 2.8 times 10 to the negative 13 uh, equals x times 0 0.0070 plus x. Oh, I hate that because that means I'm going to have to have x squared plus 
0.0070x equals 2.8 times 10 to the negative 13. I have to use the uh, quadratic formula to solve that, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend the 15 minutes it would take me to do the math. So unless you just get online and get, there's a there's calculators you can get online and just do it in a minute, but if you're doing it with paper, it takes me forever. So I'm just going to remember that we're talking about a teeny, teeny little bit of solubility. I mean, even in pure water, the tiniest bit, one less than two grams in a whole liter dissolves. So with the common ion, it's even going to be less. So this plus X is tiny. I'm just going to ignore it because it's so small that it's just going to be a decimal point that I round off anyway. So I'm just going to take my eraser and erase it. That's called fudging, and I'm very good at it. So this is 0 0.0070. Now I just have, it's not even square root. I'm just going to divide 2.8 2 .8 times 10 to the negative 13 and divide it by 0 0.0070, and I get x To the negative 11 moles over liters and then I do the same thing I'm going to multiply it by one mole 323.2 grams moles cancel and I get X equals 1.2928 times 10 to the minus 8 I only want two significant digits here, so it's going to be 1.3 times 10 to the minus 8 grams per liter. Now that's huge. That's a huge difference. That's four zeros. So that's 10,000 times less soluble. So by adding just a little bit of common ion, I make it less soluble, and that's what the common ion effect is.